Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 87 and the question is number 5. It reads, a particle is projected with initial velocity u cross alpha i hat plus u sin alpha j hat for a point zero on a horizontal plane. We're asked to show an expression for the range. Secondly, if this particle passes through two points whose displacement from zero are 3i hat plus j hat and i hat plus 3j hat, show that the range is uh, and we're given a number and then what tan alpha is. Now to be honest I like this question and the reason I like it is because it's realistic uh, in terms of you're actually working out a theoretical um, expression for the range and then you're using measurements to work out other values. So what we're actually doing here is if this is our xy plane and this here is our particle what we're doing is we're working out an expression for the range and it's going to call that capital R then we're going observing the particle and seeing it pass through two points. And from knowledge of the, those two points and the expression that we worked out for the range, we're able to get the angle of inclination, we're able to get the S sub Y if we want, we're able to get U, we're able to get everything. And that is, that's a realistic thing. That's, thing, that's something which people do. And in fact, that is what your eye does, all, your eye and brain does all the time. If somebody throws a ball at you, what happens is your brain through your eye makes a measurement of the flight of the ball. It makes a measurement of its position and its velocity and then it makes another measurement of its position and its velocity and through t the two of those it's able to work out where the ball is going to land. So it'll do this, it'll say ah, there's that, there's the ball, it'll say there's the ball, it'll work out the, we'll say the, the position or the, the, we'll say the, the range or to work out the position vector we'll say and then you're standing here and you now know where the ball will land and when it will land so you know when to put out your hand. Alright, so that you like your eye does this the whole time. So it's just interesting this question is. And uh, it, the setup of it is very basic so I'm actually not going to do the, the, the diagram. And it's going to go straight into UVAST. And we'll plug in the pieces of information which we know. We know that this is equal to U times the cosine of alpha. This is u times the sine of alpha, this is g, and this is 0, where g is negative 9.81 t and t. So v is equal to u plus a t, so this is unchanged, and this becomes u times the sine of alpha plus g t. This becomes u t plus a half a t squared, so it becomes u times the cosine of alpha t, and u times the sine of alpha t plus g over 2 t squared. Now the first thing we're asked to do is show an expression for the range. And we know, of course, at this stage, definitely at this stage, that when it's at its maximum range, s sub y, the distance above the x-axis is equal to 0. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we get that u times the sine of alpha times t plus g over 2 t squared. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to put 0 times t to the 1 is equal to 0. So this is a polynomial because it's got powers of degree 2, that's the highest power. We call a polynomial of degree 2 a quadratic and the easiest way to solve them usually is the formula minus b plus or minus the square root over 2a. Alright, but we're not going to do that because the coefficient in front of t to the 1 is 0. Alright, so the easiest way to solve this is just to take out t. We've done this the whole time. So we get t times the u times sine alpha plus g over 2t is equal to 0. Two things multiplied together to get 0. One of them is 0. So you get t is equal to 0. And you get that t is equal to negative 2u sine alpha over g. So at this time, the particle is at its maximum range. So it's negative 2u sine alpha over g. So what I'm going to do now is plug this value for t into s sub x, the range, to find out what the range is. So s sub x is equal to u cos alpha multiplied by t, which there's a negative sign, so we're going to put the negative sign here, 2u sine alpha over g, and we get that s sub x is equal to negative 2u squared sine alpha cosine alpha over g. And that is the expression we're supposed to get in the book. Of course, with the book being positive because it defines gravity as a negative number. 
All right. So the next part of the question is, is the interesting one, where we make two measurements of its position vector. So remember, of course, that the position vector s is equal to s sub x i hat plus s sub y j hat. And in this case, our position vector is u cos alpha times t i hat plus u times the sine of alpha times t plus g over 2 t squared j hat. And we're told two measurements of this position vector. We're told that the first measurement is equal to 3 i hat plus j hat and the second measurement is equal to i hat plus 3 j hat. Now how are we able to use these measurements? Well first of all because we're able to plug these measurements in here we're able to get two equations so we have two equations and we have two unknowns and therefore we're able to solve them simultaneously. Remember for every equation you need or for every uh, variable or unknown you need a single equation. So we have two equations and we have two measurements here which will give us give us the answers that we need. So of course here u cos alpha t is equal to 3 this expression is equal to 1 and separately u cos alpha t is equal to 1 and this expression is equal to 3. So I'm just going to we'll, we'll say do that. So you're going to have to give me a second here while I clean up my board. Alright so using the position vector s sub x is equal to 3 i hat it's not s sub x it's just s is equal to 3 i hat plus j hat I'm going to say that s sub x is equal to 3 and that's equal to u times the cosine of alpha t. Now we can isolate any variable we like and I think the best one to isolate is t firstly because we're asked in the question to find something for tan alpha so there's no, no, there's no good getting rid of it but t is kind of a, a one that's um, always good to get rid of so we get t t is equal to 3 over u times the cosine of alpha alright so we know that s sub y is equal to u times the sine of alpha t plus g over 2 t squared equals 1 and we also have a value for t so let's just plug that straight in so we're going to get u times the sine of alpha times 3 over u times the cosine of alpha and we're going to have plus 3 over u cos alpha again no we won't we're going to have that squared in fact we're going to have 9 over u squared cos squared alpha times g over 2 equals 1. Alright, just be careful, don't confuse my g's and my 9's. And when you just, I'm going to let you play around that with yourself, sine over cos obviously gives you tan, and you'll get up that, you get in the end that tan alpha is equal to a third minus 3g over 2u squared cos squared alpha. I'm going to call that expression 1. So that was pretty straightforward. So I'm going to use the exact same procedure with the second uh, position vector. So just take note of that. So our second position vector is S is equal to I hat plus 3J hat. So I'm just going to write that in black, in fact. Like so. <coughs> Excuse me. So S sub X is equal to U cos alpha T is equal to 1. Therefore T is equal to, e is equal to 1 over U cos alpha. Secondly, S sub Y is equal to u times the sine of alpha times t, so that's u cos alpha underneath, plus g over 2 times t squared, which is u squared cos squared alpha, and that's equal to 3. So once again, I'll leave the manipulation for you, and you get tan alpha, 
tan of alpha is equal to 3 minus g over 2u squared cos squared alpha. So now we have two expressions for tan. So let's just set those equal. So what we have is that 1 equal to 2, therefore tan alpha is equal to a third minus 3g over 2u squared cos squared alpha is equal to 3 minus g over 2u squared cos squared alpha. So let's just rearrange that. If you pull out the common factor, g over 2u squared cos squared alpha, you'll have to multiply by negative 1 plus 3, and that will be equal to a third minus 3 by putting the constants on the right and the variables on the left. So look, just let, I'll let you do the rearrangement, and you're going to get u squared is equal to negative 3g over 8 times the cos squared of alpha. I'm going to call that expression 3. Now, why did I take out u squared instead of cos squared? The reason is that obviously we, we want a tan, so there's no point getting rid of the trigonometric functions because we want to keep those. And what does this mean? Well, it means we know, of course, what tan was equal to. We knew, for example, that tan alpha was equal to 3 minus g over 2u squared cos squared alpha. All right, so let's just see what we get here. We get tan alpha is equal to 3 minus g over 2 cos squared alpha times uh, divided by u squared. So turn it upside down, we get 8 cos squared of alpha here. We get 3g here. And this becomes a positive number, and we get ended up anyway. We get uh, let's just take out a different viral. The cos squareds cancel, the g's cancel, and you get 3 plus um, you, sorry, you get 8 over 6. Uh, we get 8 over 6 plus 3, so basically tan alpha is equal to 13 over 3, which is correct. All right, so that was reasonably straightforward. And we're getting close to the end now. So I hope that convinces you anyway that uh, this is a reasonably realistic question. We just made two measurements of position and we already worked out the angle of inclination. So we know that tan alpha is equal to 13 over 3. Therefore, let's just draw this right triangle. This becomes root 178 by Pythagoras. So we know, of course, what cosine and sine are. But u squared is equal to what? u squared was equal to negative 3g over 8 cos squared alpha. So that's negative 3g over 8 times. Now, cos is 3 over one root 178. So we want to square that so we get 9 on top. No, we don't. We get 178 on top over 9 on the bottom. All right, is that correct? One sec there now. Uh, three G times one seven eight over. Yeah, that's that's correct. And we get an answer here of negative five three four G over seventy two, and that's equal to u squared. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of that because it's just going to excuse me start clogging up our diagram. So we now have pretty much all the information we need. The next thing we're asked to do is find out what the range is. And in part one we worked out that R is equal to S sub X max is equal to 2 U squared, well negative 2 U squared, sine alpha, cos alpha, over G. So let's just plug in the bits of information we know. It becomes negative 2 times U squared. Uh, times u squared, which was negative 534g over 72 times 1 over g. And the sine of alpha it was 13 
over root 178 times the cosine of alpha which was 3 over root 178 all right so let's just do a bit of cancelling root 78 squared is just 178 and we knew that that was equal to 3 times this so cancel that and we get 3 the G's cancel and we'll say just work out just do a small bit of algebra and you get in the end and it works out that you get the range at 13 over 4 all right just do this do the multiplying there on your calculator if you like all right so let's correct again now that wasn't too bad I like like I said I do like that question it's realistic and I just I also like the point about the the measurements made by our eye that's what your eye does so I hope that was interesting I hope that was reasonably straightforward thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel